Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. We move now to the letter of 3 John. Of course, this was written once again by John, the beloved apostle, just as First and Second John was, and as the Gospel of John was. This was written in the mid-80s A.D. to the same Asian churches, or one of the Asian churches, the other two letters of 1st and 2nd John were written to. It contains uh, some personal notes of counsel and greetings to a man named Gaius, who was the leader or a leader of a particular church or a particular group of churches. It also has some reproof given to a man named uh, Diotrephes. This Diotrephes was somehow in opposition to what John was teaching or the people that John had sent to teach. And so he is openly rebuked in this letter. So just like Paul had singled some individuals out or called some individuals out by name to warn about them, uh, this man is warned about in this um, specific letter for all of time. So imagine for 2,000 years, this man who John calls out has been reviled by generations of Christianity. Perhaps he repented, we don't know, but um, let's move now into the text itself. Third John, verse 1. The elder, to my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continued to walk in it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Dear friend, you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. Please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. It was for the sake of the name that they went out, receiving no help from the pagans. We ought, therefore, to show hospitality to such people, so that we may work together for the truth. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will not welcome us. So when I come, I will call attention to what he is doing, spreading malicious nonsense about us. Not satisfied with that, he even refuses to welcome other believers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Demetrius is well spoken of by everyone, and even by the truth itself. We also speak well of him, and you know that our testimony is true. I have much to write to you but I do not want to do so with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace to you. The friends here send their greetings. Greet the friends there by name. So John acknowledges another man here, Demetrius, in the latter part of this letter, saying this Demetrius is well spoken of. And so in this letter, we have uh, Gaius, who's a good guy. We have Demetrius, who's a good guy. Both of these mentioned by name. And then this Diotrephes. Now, it starts out in verse 1. Once again, John lists himself as the elder or introduces himself as the elder. Not the apostle, not the best friend of Jesus, but the elder. I want you to consider this uh, humble introduction, if you will, by John. He could have taken other titles, but he proclaimed himself to be an elder. He writes, to my dear friend Gaius, who I love in the truth. So this expression of love and appreciation for Gaius, uh, this endorsement by John to this church leader Gaius is very precious uh, in its brevity and in the depth of John's love for this guy. He says in verse two, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. 
So this prayer is precious. I just want to tap into that a little bit. John prayed for this man, and I want to pray for us, and we'll pray some more in a minute. But Lord, I pray that we might enjoy good health and that all might go well with us. Lord, even as John prayed for this man, Gaius, I pray for myself and for those that are listening, Lord, that we may enjoy good health and that all may go well with us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I think that's a wonderful prayer in every generation. John continues to write in verse 3, It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth telling how you continued to walk in it. So some believers apparently um, went out from John. They visited this um, uh, this Asian church. Uh, they talked to this pastor Gaius. They observed good things. They reported back to John about Gaius's faithfulness to the truth and how he was continuing to walk well as a Christian. Now, before I get to verse 4, I want to tell you a little story that involves my mother and, of course, verse 4. Some years ago, um, specifically in the year 2005, my mother passed away after a long illness, and uh, she was living in South Carolina. I was living in Virginia at the time of her passing, so I drove down to South Carolina and got together with my brother and sister to plan my mother's funeral, our mother's funeral. And so we did. We knew that our mother was a very committed Christian lady. She um, she had a number of Bibles, but of course, like all of us, she had one favorite. So we began to flip through her favorite Bible, looking for a verse that had a special significance to her that we could use in her funeral service. It's always nice to have something personal in a funeral service, and when you're dealing with a believer, you know, their favorite scripture is something that we often use. So as we thumbed through my mother's Bible, we found that there was only one verse that she had written out um, in her own hand in her Bible, and it was 3 John verse 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Now imagine that, friends, myself, my sister, my brother, and I, my mother's children, are grieving over the loss of our mother, and we read these words in her own hand after she has just died. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. And I can tell you that my brother and sister are Christians. And so my mother experienced that joy, and that day we experienced a measure of joy, remembering all the precious things she had taught us and the way she had raised us in the fear of the Lord. But after her funeral, I found myself driving back to Virginia, uh, living right outside of Washington, D.C. It was about 10 hours on the road. And I was thinking, you know, there's going to come a day when my children are going to gather and consider my burial and my funeral or memorial service. What are they going to come up with for my scripture to be used that day? And as I was meditating on that, I love the one my mother chose, but I love another better. I chose for my own statement of my heart toward God, Psalm 27, verse 4. And I want to read it to you. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Friends, that's my deepest desire, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord not only all the days of this life, but as Psalm 23, verse 6 says, forever. I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to dwell there as well. And for me, this expresses my heart toward God. So I want to ask you today, remember these words, this little story of myself and my mother, and think about your own mortality and what your friends and family will say about you when you're gone. What Bible verse would represent your heart toward God better than any other? I I ask you to go and seek the Lord and find that verse. Maybe even write it out in your own hand in your Bible. Maybe even let your family know that this is the verse that means the most to you. Continuing in 3 John, verse 5, we read, Dear friend, you are faithful in what you're doing for the brothers and sisters, even though they're strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. Please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. And so he's mentioning, John is mentioning, apparently, these people that reported back to John about Gaius. These are emissaries that are go-betweens from church to church. And uh, John is instructing Gaius to help them, 
to help them perhaps with their financial needs, with their food, with their housing, whatever it is, and then to send them on the way because they're not receiving any help from pagans. John writes in verse 8, We ought to therefore show hospitality to such people so that we may work together for the truth. Now, what does that say to you and I? That we should help the people that are serving God. When a missionary comes through or an itinerant minister of some sort, Uh, that's living in a way that honors God and seeking to serve God. We need to help them with our finances, perhaps invite them into our homes, perhaps invite them out to a meal. Whatever we need to do, it's a manner of showing hospitality to the Lord himself for those who honor God and serve him. This verse 9 mentions this Diotrephes, who is um, not a good guy. John writes, he loves to be first. He will not welcome John or the people from John. And John says, when I come, I'm going to call attention to what he's doing. So John is calling this guy out. Sometimes we in our modern Christian culture have this concept that we ought never to say anything negative about someone. Well, if someone is behaving negatively, affecting the church and um, uh, the life of the church, they sadly, if they don't repent, need to be called out publicly. And so John calls this man out publicly as an example to us that those who refuse to cooperate with the plans and purposes of God and God's church need to be called out publicly. John goes on to instruct us that we should imitate Jesus by doing good. He says, Dear friends, do not imitate what is evil, but imitate what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. And so let's let's just pray into these things. Lord, we thank you for the promise of good health and that all may go well with those who are in Christ. We thank you for the prayers of John for this and the prayers for ourselves that we've prayed. Lord, I thank you that we have children, both natural and spiritual, that are walking in the truth. And that does give us great joy, Lord. I pray that we would be hospitable and we would support the people of God. I pray that we would act towards your people and your church in a way that honors you, Lord. Lord, help us to show hospitality and support for those who walk in the truth. God, help us to imitate what is good and not what is evil. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.